you know, a recent study found the average person spends a staggering two hours and 48 minutes every day on social media, which absolutely wreaks havoc on their productivity during work hours. Hey, it's Chris, and I would say learning to become indistractable is arguably the most critical skill that somebody could pick up in today's modern world. So prepare yourself for a game-changing video. I'm gonna help revolutionize your iPad productivity while also debunking some common productivity myths. Let's just start by previewing this super productive iPad home screen, which is largely powered by the TickTick productivity app. So we're gonna be talking about time management, task management, habits, all kinds of things in today's video. And then I'm gonna tell you which one of these widgets represents a productivity superpower, but we're gonna save that until the end because that's where it's gonna make the most sense. So as it stands, I just finished my productivity course and that means I've kinda of got productivity seeping out of my pores. <laughs> I've just steeped myself in it for about the last year. And if you really wanna oversimplify it, productivity really comes down to the word focus. So we're going to talk about focusing first. And I'm actually going to illustrate on the iPad itself as we go. And we're going to start off by talking about willpower because there's this misconception that people have that willpower all by itself is all somebody really needs to eliminate distractions. But that is not true. You actually have to create an environment for yourself where your focus can flourish. Now I know you've heard about focus modes before, but I want to kind of reinvent how you think of focus modes today. Because really your iPad is basically like a Swiss army knife that can do so many things, which is great, but that also means there's tons of opportunities for distractions. But what focus modes let you do is turn this digital Swiss army knife into a single purpose tool. So here I am in settings. You can see I've got one for personal, sleep, work, but you could have one for writing or for reading or brainstorming. And if you look at my home screen here, you're going to notice I've got these four green shortcuts in a widget in the top left corner. And that lets me easily switch between my different focus modes. And I'll actually link up my video tutorial for you where I set this up and show it off. And when I hit each focus mode, it completely changes the home screen, including the wallpaper in the back. But one thing I discuss in depth in the productivity course is the book, Your Brain at Work. And from a neuropsychological standpoint, it turns out that brain power and willpower are not infinite resources. They're finite. And as you go throughout the day, every little task that you do decreases your willpower and your brain power. So focus modes are super important. And if you're not making use of them, you might not care all that much about productivity. In one of the books that I cover in the course, there's this idea of turning your devices into single purpose devices. And what focus modes let you do is kind of do that virtually. Now, one technique that's really great at helping you focus is called time boxing. And time boxing, represented by the app I've got open over on the right, is the complete opposite of having an unstructured, open-ended to-do list, like if you're just throwing tasks into Apple Reminders over here on the left. Time boxing means that you give tasks specific time slots on your calendar ahead of time to ensure that your priorities are clear. So for instance, you could schedule a 30 minute time box in the morning and the afternoon to go through and respond to important emails. And what that does is it preordains or carves out specific chunks or boxes of time when your task will get accomplished. It's not open-ended, it's not unstructured. Now, of course, you could just use your Apple calendar to do some time boxing, but I'm a huge fan of Tick Tick for time boxing. And one of the main reasons just has to do with the ridiculous amount of widgets that come with Tick Tick that end up making time boxing extra useful. And one thing that time boxing is really good at is helping with procrastination. There's this misconception out there that procrastination is just caused by laziness, but that's not true. Procrastination could be caused by all kinds of things like perfectionism or decision paralysis or just fear of failure. But with time boxing, you pre-commit to not procrastinate. Powerful. I've got a habit widget here. We haven't yet mentioned habits. Now there's this idea floating around out there. I bet you've heard it before that it takes 21 days to solidify a new habit or to break an old habit. And that's kind of a misconception because it actually can take anywhere from 18 to over 200 days depending on the person and the habit. Now, forming habit chains is a great way to make or break habits. And of course, I love to recommend the popular Streaks app for habit tracking, which is the widget I've got here on my home screen. But one way to go beyond habit chains is to get into routine chains with something called habit stacking. So this is something that James Clear likes to talk about, but each of these lines represents a habit you got a cue, craving, response, and reward. And instead of just having a single habit, you can actually turn each habit into a sequence 
or a series of habits. And what that actually does is create a seamless routine. When habit one is over, you immediately start habit two and so on. And to make this all make sense, think about it as assembling a chain of dominoes where each domino represents a habit. And once you set off the first domino or habit, the rest of the habits just follow in a seamless predetermined sequence. Now, the reason this is so powerful has to do with something called synaptic pruning. Synaptic pruning works by eliminating weaker or less frequently used neural connections while strengthening the more frequently used neural connections. So when you store your habits as routines using habit chaining, your habits become more efficient and more automatic over time thanks to synaptic pruning. So if you really like this kind of stuff and you want to take your productivity to the next level, then you should absolutely check out the brand new productivity course. It's called Learning to be Productive. There's a free quiz that you can take there to see how productive you are or aren't right now. It's linked up down in the description. Now, I mentioned the word focus. If you want to focus on achieving better accuracy when you're drawing or writing with your Apple Pencil, you should absolutely check out Paperlike's Pencil Grips, which you probably already noticed I've been using throughout the video. These grips were created by an award-winning product designer, David Burkhart to maximize comfort and reduce grip fatigue. But the cool thing is, as you can see, they're double tap compatible and they work with your iPad's magnetic charging. You actually get two grips when you place an order, so you can choose the best tool for the job. The custom grip is perfect for long writing and drawing sessions, while the precision grip offers better stroke precision and accuracy. And you can check them both out using the link down in the description. Now, I definitely have a favorite productivity widget. It's this big one here. It's the Eisenhower Matrix widget from Tick Tick. And if you're not familiar with the Eisenhower Matrix, it has four quadrants where you can place your tasks. The first one is important and urgent. There's one for not urgent but important. There's one for not important and urgent. And there's also one for not urgent and not important. So obviously I just drew this one in my Apple notes, but Tick Tick has a fully functioning Eisenhower matrix that integrates with your tasks and your calendar within the Tick Tick app. And the benefit to using it is that you'll always know exactly what you should be working on. It helps you prioritize. Now there's a common misconception out there that having more items on your to-do list is gonna lead to more productivity. That's actually not true though. What actually ends up happening then is that you get overwhelmed. It's much better to learn how to prioritize and focus on the most important tasks first, figure out what you need to do right away, what you don't even have to do, what can you take off your plate and delegate. And that's definitely what the Eisenhower Matrix is gonna help you figure out. And I love Tick Tick's implementation. Nobody else has a great widget like Tick Tick. The way I like to think of the Eisenhower Matrix is sort of like a traffic light where the green light is the urgent and important items. And then a yellow light kind of represents the important but not urgent things. We wanna slow down, use some caution. And then your flashing yellow is kind of your urgent but not important. And then your red light, of course, is your not urgent or important. Just stop. You don't do those at all. Now, you don't want to be a workaholic. You don't want to burn out. It's a common misconception out there that your brain doesn't need to take frequent breaks in order to maintain its peak proficiency and productivity. So how do you build frequent breaks into your day without ruining the whole thing? Well, a lot of people use the very popular Pomodoro method. So I've got a Pomodoro timer here, and this is actually running through Tick Tick as well, although there are tons of other popular Pomodoro timer apps out there. But a Pomodoro consists of working for 25 minutes and then taking a short break. And you can see that when you start the timer, you get a nice little countdown with the widget there. And there's actually a lot more to the Pomodoro method. It's a lot heftier and more robust than people realize. And of course, I break all of that down in the productivity course. But I love Tick Tick's integration of the Pomodoro method within the app. There's so many cool little details like the icon on the side actually shows you how far in the timer you are. All right, you see this widget down here in the corner? It's got a quote on it. One of my favorite quotes says, opportunity is missed by most people because it is dressed in overalls and looks like work. That's from Edison. I got this in a stack here and I also keep my recent wins in this stack. This is the post-it note app and you can see, you know, I'm excited. I finished my course. I just got 5,000 people subscribed to the newsletter. There's a hundred days under my belt of tracking calories. A misconception that people seem to have is that you should only celebrate the big wins in your life, the huge milestones. And while that is great and those big milestones give you something to look forward to, you can see I've got this other widget down here that's my course launch countdown. That's motivating, that's exciting, of course, but actually stacking and tracking those small wins as well, keeping them in front of your eyes, helps you understand that you're making progress and big strides in your life. Because the little things add up to big things, it's called compounding, and I like to track that with this post-it note widget here. It's just kind of my motivational widget. 
And that brings us to my ultimate iPad productivity hack. And I'm talking about it here because if everything else in the video isn't helping you stay focused, here's one thing that you can try that might make a big difference. In the bottom left corner of my screen here, I've got a 10 minute delay timer. And I'm using this for something called the 10 minute rule. And here's how it works. The next time you find yourself being tempted to be distracted from whatever it is that you're supposed to be focusing on, you can implement the 10 minute rule to say, whatever it is that's tempting me is not fully off limits, whether that's maybe scrolling social media, internet surfing. Instead, you tell yourself, I can do it, but I need to at least wait 10 minutes. And you start the timer here. And this comes from a guy named Nir Eyal, whose book, Indistractable, I also summarize some of the key points of in the course. But something powerful happens psychologically when you implement the 10 minute rule. Basically, 99% of the time, you end up regaining some of your self-control and your willpower, and you go on with your work and don't get distracted. This little timer is surprisingly effective for keeping you focused. You have to give it a try. I hope you got something really awesome out of this video. If you really wanna upgrade your productivity game, then you should check out the productivity course, Learning to Be Productive. It's designed for beginners. Don't forget also, we have an awesome newsletter. It has one of the highest open rates I've ever seen in the newsletter industry. And if you subscribe, you'll immediately find out why. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I'll catch you in the next video. Later.